Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Trying something on my new laptop. Um, so I made two different versions of this video. But this is the final studio album for King's X videos, album videos, um, on November 8th. It's November 8th? Yeah. 2022, Election Day. I did just go vote. I had to. You know what? That's weird. <laughs> I had uh, lab work done earlier, so that was taking. I got I had like a half day. I might be able to do video, do some kind of videos on Thursday or Friday, depending on weather. Though I may be staying home. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the the final the video for the final studio album from King's X. I mean, I talked about the live albums a little bit. They did after the last. I uh, yesterday I did talked about uh, XV from 2008. Um, they did do live in London. Uh, it came out in 2010, you know, and I'm not sure if that's on Spotify. I can't remember if I've even heard it. Spotify was really acting up for me um, earlier, where I could on my new laptop, I couldn't get couldn't get it. Like I could open it up, I could see the, some of the artists, but I couldn't get it to actually open up like a playlist or anything like that. Um, but I don't know. Let me just look quickly. But this is a video about three sides of one. And now I have both kitty cats here. If this is actually filming. <laughs> As you can see, oops. We got kitty cat number one there and kitty cat number two right here. On the window, looking at the rain. They've been on a number of these videos I've made. Yeah, that probably didn't show up on that. Probably, this comes out. I've had problems with making videos through my, my laptop, so the sound wasn't very good. But Three Sides of One, which I still want to get the vinyl. I'm not even 100% certain the vinyl's been made available. I, I thought it was, though. On Amazon initially, people that ordered through Amazon, they got delayed like two or three times. So I, 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 I had, after the first delay, I just decided... Um, to cancel it and just buy the CD because um, I know the vinyl just takes longer but here it is I'm trying to get on both cameras yeah of course our, the male cat the, the young bait the young one likes to it just can't get enough he's too curious so this this came out the real official release date was September 2nd 2022 so like about two months ago and six days or whatever um, Three Sides of One, they, they were saying how the title kind of came, they were kind of struggling with a title for it, and it just, you know, the three of them, and they're all kind of making music together, um, and, let me show the booklet, I guess, it's like, if I have the vinyl, I'll eventually show that, I did pick up some vinyl, uh, last weekend, that I'll show. Hopefully, my the Deer Hunter and to my vinyl will come in. I can show that with it. But here's the booklet. Um, this is their first, obviously, as I mentioned many times, the first like studio album in 14 years. Oh, there, there, there he goes. Um, this is really weird trying to make videos with two different cameras <laughs> simultaneously. Um, and, you know, I'd seen a lot of interviews over the last few years, a lot of talk about an album, and it was like 2020 or 2019. They had the album, they like had finished most of it, and they were mixing it in 2020, and they said it, there were so many songs that could have been a double album, which it obviously did not, Three Sides of One. Although Three Sides of One almost sounds like it could be like Three Sides of Every Story. Um... But now in reading, I read the XV chapter last night, kind of understand a little more about it. They just, the frust, as much as an X, XV was a, at least looked on and looked as a success, as a record that the last record was quite good, you think, after a really good record reading in this book uh, from the members, the oral history and, and the friends and people that involved with the band, it wasn't the best experience, I guess. And it was frustrating, I guess, Doug and... And Jerry had just not been there toward the end of the making of it. And after that, Ty just said, why are we making an album? You know, so they just decided they weren't going to make any album. They just were just play live occasionally and do side projects. So that explains a bit why it took 14 years. Because um, I'm sure they had music they could have released, could have recorded. and um, 
But it's encouraging that they had so many songs when they're making this record that there probably is at least one more record still that's going to come out at some point. Um, so getting into the actual album, I've probably listened to it eh, seven or eight times. I mean, I haven't listened to it that much since it came out a little over two months ago. It's kind of interesting. I always associate the first time I heard it was when I bought my new laptop done, done in um, suburban Minneapolis in St. Louis Park. But um, I'm going to be going there probably a week from today to get something so I can work from home a little better. Um, a little setup and everything at the computer store. I, I think this album is... It's um, not better... Better than the sum of its parts isn't exactly the best way to describe it, but it, my initial reaction is kind of the same way in that it... It con a lot of the songs are just good. Like, there's a bunch of good songs, but there aren't any, like, just stone-cold classics. There's no bangers, really. Not really. I, I, if I'm putting favorites from this record, here's the track list. Oops. This is weird. You know, this video comes out and the audio doesn't clip like my, my other laptop. This is maybe my new way to go with some of these. Um, I'd say Let It Rain, the first track. Give It Up. All God's Children, even though it's a little long. Um, festival. And now I'm like kind of like thinking Holidays and Watcher are probably the ones. I like Take the Time a little more than I did before. Um, nothing But the Truth is a little long also, but uh, Flood Part 2, it's like that genty thing. It's like, there's elements of Flood Part 2 I love. I love the, the ending of that song. The genty part is kind of off. It's it's something again. They're doing sort of in, something in Congress, like a minor key or a style that you wouldn't normally think would go in the song. And um, it's a grower, a little bit of a grower, like Kimbra's song, '90s music, and some of these other songs. Where initially, like, what the hell is this? What are they doing with this? And like, all right, I'm kind of liking it a little more now. Um, so that's kind of it. I mean, I I was thinking it reminds me a little bit of a couple of their other records. Maybe maybe most was like Tapehead, but I think Tapehead, the first half of it is better, but it's more of like, it's like I'm looking for that statement track on, I mean, you could say Groove Machine on Tapehead. Um, I mean, it, and it's also a little more divided. There's three songs from Jerry Gaskell on here, which I'll admit that going through the catalog again, I've always liked Jerry Gaskell. His songs are um, a little more consistently good in that, I usually just enjoy the psychedelia, the, his voice. It's very Beatles-ish. Um, and so I enjoy it. But having three songs, I don't know if all three songs hit sort of that, like the American Cheese I love and like Julie off of XV. But it, this, they're still good. They're still good. I mean, the, let's see. It's She Called Me Home, um, Take the Time, I think is, is a Jerry song, and Holidays. Those are the three. But um, Ty is, I think Ty's, Vocal songs are sort of hit and miss. I love Festival. I mean, from among the songs on here. Festival might be my favorite song here. Festival and Let It Rain. If I, if I was going, like, go-to songs, Festival and Let It Rain are probably the two songs I think of this album for the most. Doug clearly doesn't... He does a little bit of screaming, but he doesn't have the vocal range he once did. Um, so it's it's understandable. He's 70, whatever. And the thing that... The context of this album is that, yeah, they it came out in 2022... There was a deal where they had to have the record label to be able to release it under, and it came out on... It is still on Inside Out, so it's like, what, their third consecutive. But I know there were some hurdles they had with it, and why the documentary hasn't come out either, because there's probably music from here in the documentary. But this this album could have easily come out in 2019 or 2020, probably. Um, but they just had to clear everything legally. Um so, yeah, it's marketed, distributed, da, 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 so. But yeah, I mean, I like it, so, you know, where it falls in. I mean, it's, it's their 13th album. It's, you know, coming out now, what is it, I guess, from their first album, you'd say it was, it was uh, 36 years? 88, is it 36 years from 88? Yeah, I think so, or what's, whatever, 22, 34 years. 34 years past their debut album, and really 42. 2, 43, 41, 40 or more or less 40 years since their inception. So, I mean, four years into your career, you know, I mean, it's like Rush with Clockwork Angels. I hope it's not the last album. If it is, 
it's not a bad record to go out on. Um, but at the same time, this band has been pretty consistent that it, where it compares, I'll be shown in the, in the rankings video, which given I have some time now, I think, and I'm just kind of, but I'm just curious, first of all, what, what is your take Kings X fans on the new album, three sides of one? I've seen mixed, um, comments about it. I think a lot of people like it. Remind, reminds of some of their older records. A lot of people are kind of just like, it's sort of there. It, they're, it's refreshing to have a new album, but it didn't get the buzz maybe that you'd think after 14 years. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, I'm certainly happy we got another King's X album, because at one point I figured there might not be another King's X album. Their last album was XV, but... Um, so, yeah, that, that's it for, for King's X's uh, newest album, um, Three Sides of One. Um, and, like I said, I'll do a ranking shortly um and i have um what is it i read the chapter on xv and i've read a chapter further up and if so i'm getting close to finishing the book i'm on page 266 right now and this book is 326 pages i've got like three and a half chapters or three chapters left but it's it's definitely this is a good read i, I should have read it when i bought it but you know responsibilities discipline just being lazy or whatever this is my hope to read next. The thing about this book, this Marillion book, separated out, it's a Redux version, which I, I think my wife got me got through a discount for me when she was working at Barnes and Noble. This is a, a printed version that came out early to mid two thousands. It was like two thousand. This is a this is a Redux. So I and this I feel like I'll be going back in time a little bit, re, like watching a documentary that was made 50, ten or fifteen years ago. But they're my favorite band. It's, it's ridiculous that I never. I never actually uh, read it. I read parts of it, just like the King's X books. I have some other ones over there, the Cloud Cult book and some others. That maybe I'm going to start doing music book reviews on this channel. But um, like I said, thank you for subscribing if you subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and please subscribe. Really appreciate that. Um, what's your take on Three Sides of One? Where, is it gonna, where do you think it might end on your albums of the year list, which are coming up soon? I'm just finalizing a lot of my stuff with that. You know, we got one earmarked, like, significant record uh, left coming out in a little over a week, the Derpa Robbins album. But, um, yeah, I mean, it'll certainly be on my list. But thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.